Hey guys, Jake here, and today I'm going to try and explain a little bit of solar to you, alright? Most of y'all that watch the channel probably know that our entire house here is all off-grid. And it's run by this solar system, alright? Now, I'll be the first guy to tell you that the solar to run a home is not cheap. The everyday person is probably not going to expend what it takes to put a system like this in place. Now there are big differences between a grid tied, which means you're basically adding solar to your existing house that is already tied to the grid where you got an electric bill, and a totally off-grid system like this one. Now we have three different banks of panels here. We got uh, 18 panels on this first bank, 18 panels over on that other bank, and 16 panels over there on the house. Three different banks. Uh, so if something happens to one of these, we still have power from the other two. But uh, what I want to get across to everybody on this video is on your solar and power uh, for your SHTF situation, because that's what most people are preparing for, Everybody is selling you, trying to sell you these little portable uh, solar battery packs, all right? And some of these things are very expensive, several thousand dollars, and they go up from there. And being a guy that owns a lot of solar and runs his house off of solar and deals with solar every day, and have put out an extreme amount of money on my solar, uh, I can speak from a little bit of experience. And I can tell you that none of these prepping channels out there that are trying to sell you this uh, portable solar pack thing would have one if it was not given to them or sponsored. Uh, that's just the plain simple fact of it. Well, there probably are a few people out there that have bought them and you know for the small occasional use they'll probably be all right uh, but let's face it in a grid down situation what are you trying to run uh, your refrigerator lighting and most of you are going to want to run some kind of air conditioning probably uh, i know a lot of you guys can get by without air conditioning uh, but a lot of the country can't when it's uh, 90 plus degrees, you are going to want some kind of air conditioning. And I'm here to tell you, in SHTF, uh, trying to sleep in a house uh, where you got sweat running down your back, uh, sweat pooling on your chest, forehead, you wake up in a pool of sweat in your bed, uh, it's not going to be enjoyable. And that is going to tend to wear on you and the people around you, your family, all the same to make everybody in a bad mood, no sleep, uh, you know, it's just all downhill from there. It's just one more thing that's going to make you uncomfortable. So don't buy one of these portable small solar systems thinking that it's going to run an AC unit, a small window unit. They simply will not do it, guys. Yeah, it'll charge your drill batteries or charge your cell phone. You know, it may run some lights for a little while. Uh, maybe even a power tool or two, but those are quick simple runs for electronics and equipment that require continuous amperage Which I'll take you over here and show you There's our Generac 22 kilowatt standby generator that's propane and a thousand gallon propane tank uh, just in case But all of these systems that are in your house require continuous power and you're not going to run your window unit AC unit for two hours to keep it cool all night uh, it just doesn't work like that guys okay I can assure you I built this house to run off of solar <clears throat> and added many special features to uh, to help with this solar and cooling air conditioning specifically because we're in texas and it's 100 degrees out here today this is your standard well i wouldn't say standard but 
it is a standard four ton self-contained air conditioned system you basically buy it set it outside your house and you run the ducting in to your house it can go up through the side underneath however you choose to run it but you have an inlet and an outlet where the air comes from the house is cooled or heated and goes back to the house now this is also a central heat unit and runs off of propane uh, I try not to use it most of y'all know I have a wood burning stove in the house but this air conditioning unit being a four ton is size normally for a one or two bedroom house the industry standard is 500 square feet per ton so uh, just add up how many square feet are in your house and it'll give you an idea of the size of your air conditioner uh, if you've got a 3,000 square foot house chances are you probably have five or six tons of AC uh, in that house this four ton unit right here is cooling the entire 5,000 square foot of this barn dominium and it holds the temperature very well like i said i built the house so i was able to add the extra insulation so that i could go with a smaller unit for all of your pre-existing houses and things it's just not going to be uh, efficient to do that unless you just have tons of money i mean you're going to have to upgrade insulation uh, equipment everything this is all high efficiency okay but that is going to be your biggest draw on a solar system and any of these little portable units are not going to run that. They're not going to run a window unit either. They may for an hour, but it's not going to be long term. Now this is a room that is built underneath my house. It's my solar room, battery room, electronics room, mechanical room. <clears throat> but these, this, focus are all of the inverters and controllers there's my main panel box to my house just like you got in yours here are the batteries you can see I got four banks in there uh, each one is 12 volt for a total of 48 volts I think that's about a 1200 amp hour battery and guys when you start talking about electrics and wattages and amps and amp hours and all that that's where many people get confused their eyes glaze over and you are lost uh, in all of this mess and it is it, it's very technical uh, they want to sell it to you as a simple deal and uh, by no means is this the you know latest greatest technology uh, our solar system is about uh, five or six years old uh, but Steiner is still made. They still make these products. Uh, but we are looking to upgrade for more amps. And I'm just going to give you an example of how my system works here. And what you can expect uh, if you're looking to put a system in your house. Or emergency power. Uh, how you need to run it. Okay. Now what we have here is the far box over there on the left is a controller. This is a controller. This next box that you see here is an inverter. And this next box that you see here is an inverter. Uh, this box is basically just a main panel that ties everything together with wiring. And this is a third controller over here. Like I said, we have the three uh, panel banks outside, so I need three controllers to run them. Uh, so that if one goes down, I still have two operating. All right, but these two inverters right here, the maximum amperage uh, that those inverters will run continuously is about 80 amps, okay? Uh, and if you were to go around and have a measuring device and in your house, if you check your refrigerator and your AC and your dishwasher and your washing machine, uh, when those machines were running, uh, and some of them even have tags on them that tell you how many amps it draws, but you can add up the amperage that it takes you to run things around your house. Now the key there is it's not running all the time. Uh, so just when the device is working is when it's drawing amperage. Your air conditioner is the thing that is probably going to run the most in your house. Uh, it's on and off all day, all night long. 
Uh, when my air conditioner kicks on, it draws about 60 amps. All right, now I'm only making 80 with this system. Uh, big air conditioners and equipment, you put soft starts on them so that it only draws 30 or 40 amps uh, instead of the 60 when it kicks on and it starts softly, slowly and the amperage drops. Now once the machine is operating continuously uh, it's only drawing about 35 amps which leaves me you know 45 amps here to play with. Well I also have some smaller ductless mini spillet systems which run about 10 amps. Uh, so you throw a couple of those in there and you're you know you're up over 40, 50, 55 amps uh, you throw the water well in on that, you know, that's another 25 amps. You can see how if your air conditioner is running and you kick on your water well, you're now drawing more power than what your system will deliver. Now, all of y'all that are tied to the grid, most of y'all have a 150 amp or a 200 amp service over here panel on the wall. And the electric company provides you the 150 or 200 amp service depending on how big your house is and as you turn things on it just draws more amps from the service well it basically works the same way here except on a solar off-grid system you are limited by the amount of amps that your system can generate and mine is maxed out at about 80 so I need to remove these two inverters from my system because they are old, five years, basically obsolete now, even though they still work perfectly and they're new technology. Uh, the battery technology is changing. <clears throat> now they can bind inverters and controllers all in one. I'm not necessarily about that because uh, if you have an inverter problem, well, it takes out your controller too. Whereas here, each one is individual. And I, as a prepper, have spare controllers uh, upstairs. At the time, the inverters were sold out and I couldn't get a spare. Uh, but, you know, uh, I'm looking to remove these two inverters and upgrade to three inverters, which would give me basically another 40 to 50 amps on my system, uh, which should be more than plenty. Uh, but it is sized about to the maximum about what we can run now in this house. Uh, just kind of gives you an idea and how a system is sized. Now if you're looking to go uh, fully off grid with a battery backup, uh, you can look to spend somewhere between uh, sixty and a hundred thousand dollars depending on how much power you want and uh, you know again if your grid tied or not. Uh, the battery backups themselves can range anywhere from fifteen to thirty thousand dollars uh, these controllers can be anywhere from three uh, to uh, eight thousand dollars a piece depending on which ones you get uh, the ones that are all built in together are obviously on a high end uh, but you can see if you're buying three inverters uh, at eight thousand dollars a piece you can see you get twenty five thousand dollars worth of inverters and controllers real quick and then you have a twenty or thirty thousand dollar battery which goes on top of that, you know, you're at 60,000 and you haven't even installed any of this stuff. And, uh, you know, for the small 12, 24 volt systems, uh, you know, a guy with some handy experience could definitely install it. Uh, but when you start talking about 48 volts and uh, multiple controllers, inverters, control panels, uh, things linked together, uh, you know, lots of wattage, uh, lots of voltage, I prefer a professional do it. Uh, these all were installed by a professional solar company and I am having a professional solar company uh, give me the quote bid uh, to replace these inverters. And if you're an electrician I'm sure you can get it done if you understand all the, the solar workings uh, which most probably do. Uh, but again it just gives you some kind of an idea uh, of what kind of system you're going to need to actually run a whole house off grid and to have the comforts when shit hits the fan and the grid goes down uh, because they've all told us guys that the roaming blackouts are coming all the way across America and that can affect a lot of things everything from health uh, to your food and your comfort 
Uh, if you've got deep freezers full of food in there and they turn your power out for a couple of days, uh, you know, that freezer food is going to go bad, guys. Uh, like I said, you don't want to lay in there and try to sleep with uh, sweat beating off of you. We know how that is. Uh, I would highly suggest you don't use solar uh, to try and cook or uh, heat your home. Uh, the heating is a direct, uh, basically a direct short and is going to require much more than this. Uh, we do our cooking, uh, our heating of our home, and the washing machine, uh, clothes dryer, uh, those are run off of propane. As I said, the central heat unit is propane, uh, but we do have a wood stove that we do heat most of the house with. Uh, but in an emergency, I can click the button on the wall and have uh, central heat uh, on demand. That gives you an idea, guys, of what you're going to need, what you might need. I have a buddy that has invested about probably six to eight thousand dollars in a mobile trailer uh, a 10 by 12 uh, double axle cargo trailer which he has installed you know the latest greatest technology inverters batteries panels all kinds of stuff where he can plug and play and have electricity and uh, like I said he's between six and eight thousand dollars and he's just now getting uh, close to the range to where he could run a small window unit AC uh, most of those things guys are going to draw 15 or 20 amps and uh, you know those little portable systems just do not put out the amperage over time so don't be fooled by all these prepper channels trying to sell you uh, these little portable banks like I said I don't think any of them would have them if they were not donated uh, sponsored and given uh, but yeah they get paid to sell these little things and I think you're going to really be dissatisfied with it uh, if you've got any expectation of the thing running a, a small air conditioner. Uh, lights, no problem. Uh, they might refer a refrigerator. Uh, again, from what I have seen on these things, having the solar panels and being portable, they are really just not made for the everyday use. They are for the occasional camping uh, tool use, and I think uh, many of you will see as these things are used and brought in and out outdoors uh, the plugging and playing of the solar panels and all of that kind of stuff uh, I don't think the wear is going to be really good and in a grid down situation you're not going to want to be leaving solar panels and chargers and things like that around outside where people can easily take them uh, so it is going to be a matter of moving those things in and out and with it being such a small battery bank I mean if you get a few cloudy days in there guys you're really going to be in trouble if you're depending on that little portable system. Uh, so, I would highly recommend, if you can, you know, if you got that shiny bass boat or an old hot rod car out there or something that's really not going to do you any good in the future uh, when the grid goes down and gas is 10 or $15 a gallon, uh, maybe you should get rid of it and invest in something that's going to help you and your family through these trying times all right that's just a little idea guys don't believe all these little uh, fake prepper items everybody's trying to sell tried and trusted is what you want okay everybody stay safe appreciate y'all watching like share and subscribe more to come thanks guys